probably can't see my face. I don't know if I got it far enough, far enough out for you to see uh, my head and my shoulders. But uh, I split. This is a piece of piece of beach. I'm pretty sure you can see the top of the stump. This is a piece of firewood I've been chopping on. Um, it's just a. I cut a small tree down, and I'm working on a couple of spoon blanks. They're kind of like a thin. I found that, like I, I, I do a bunch of kind of a little bit of testing. I, I eat uh, if I'm gonna eat oatmeal or soup or something like that. I'll try one of my wooden spoons out. And the ones that I found that eat the best out of like a bowl of oatmeal or something is the thin ones. If they're too deep, then it's too much work to get it out. And if it's too big, then it's it's too much work, too big. But uh, anyway, so that's why this is so thin. And uh, this is one I just did a minute ago out of the same stick. Go on, cat. Go on. I got a cat trying to get me to pet him. But uh, go on. But anyway, this is the same stick as the back side of it. It was like this. And uh, you can see it's got a little curve to the handle. I don't really mind it being following the grain a little bit. I kind of like it. Having the the natural um, uh, like lay of the wood, it, I I don't really use patterns. I don't use patterns. I I should say, I just kind of do things by eye. Um, when I made my spoke shave, I made it by eye. Uh, in my previous video, I showed my spoke shave, and I'll use it here in a minute. But uh, this one's kind of got a turn up on the end here, where the grain kind of tilts up. Go on, cat. He's got to go find him another place to lay down. It's raining everywhere, and there's only two dry spots, under the house and over here under the porch. But anyway, so I'm thinking about using this as my bowl, even though it won't won't stay in there because, for the most part, because it, when I cut my bowls, I cut in from the outside of the bark. I'll start back, say, a third. If you cut this into thirds, like here, here, here. Then I'll start about a third back on a eating spoon, anyway, on the length. And I'll cut in, and then I'll let my axe turn out. Like that. And because I have a, uh, because of the way I've got my axe ground, it kind of works like a little scoop. See, my axe has this, I've got it ground back towards the hut toe and back towards the heel of the of the blade and uh, it's got a real good convex grind so it just kind of scoops and as you can, I don't know if you can see it in the camera but this has got like a, a dip in it where it scooped it out but anyway that's that's all I do for right now for my bowl where my bowl is going to be just like that then I'll start on the edge right here come back about halfway up the distance of where my bowl is and start to round it out. Round it out a little bit. And then I'll do the same on the other side. And they might not be perfect, but you got time later to round them out. You can move back and forth. Round them out a little bit. And then what I do is I come back here and I'll come off of this hip. This is like a hip. It's not directly in the center here. Like right here, here's the center. It's over here on this side. Go on. It's another cat. Go on. But uh, anyway, you take this hip off. It's about the same distance. Then you kind of turn it around the corner to where it comes into this side. See how it took that off? Right there. Okay, and you do the same thing on this side. Take the hip off. Around the corner. Then I do the same in the middle. And that gives me my basic, almost like a boat look on the front of this stick, front of this split. And then you can, you I mean you can fiddle with this in a minute. What I normally do is I'll come back and I'll go, see, I'll go the other way. because. Because you got a dip, because you have a curve right here, 
when what you got to realize is on the bottom of the bowl, the grain goes this way and the grain goes this way on the bowl. So when you go to carve it, you have to carve from this point that way and from this point that way. And you have to make all your carving end in the middle. So I'll split, split this back, get that hip off. Then I'm basically, because I carved into a, into a cylindrical piece of wood, straight in with my axe, it ends up with this egg-shaped curve naturally. Go on, cat. Go on. So you end up with this egg shape naturally. And what I do is I, I'll follow that on around because I'm going to end up beveling this front edge anyway, downwards. Uh, just to show you an idea what that looks like, I'm going to take, see this as a bevel from where the bark is, right here. Well, I'm going to bevel it all the way around on my end, right there like that. You see that? This is where the bark bevel was, and then this is where I've carved it to bevel. I'll do it a little neater than that here in a minute. But I'm just showing that as an illustration. But I'm going to follow that. I'll follow that bevel all the way around. Come in a little further. Split it off. Because I got that convex grind, it goes in and it goes out. And uh, it kind of works like a chisel. If you've got the bevel on the chisel down, you can turn out of a cut. Well, if you got the you got the grind rod on an axe, it turns itself out of the cut. So you end up going in and out. And here's your, you're going to be able to see this one real well. See where I'm going along that bark? Once I get it chopped in as far as I want, I'll let it go ahead and run its way out. the hips off on the back side. Just like you did on the front side, you're going to take them hips off. Another trick is, or safety feature, <laughs> is don't bring your axe up way up here. You'll hit your hand if you're if you're off or your hand's tired, which after doing a bunch of spoons, your hand will end up getting tired. So don't bring your axe way up above what you're cutting. Try and keep down low and off to the side of where your fingers are. My thumb's up here. I got about an inch in between them. And I try and keep my my axe out of the way of my thumb. All right. Now, with just that much, I went from a split to a, almost a roughed out spoon. It's not quite there. I'm going to do some tweaking with it. But this kind of spoon, it's thick here. Got a little bit of a spine here. So what I've been making recently, I've just, I didn't always make that, but I kind of like it being thick right up here you can hold it back where it's thinner and I like it to flare out at the back and uh, and it needs to be thin up in the front you can probably see that but uh, anyway that off a little bit square because I don't like it going out so pointy. I kind of want it more of a real egg shape where it's towards the handle. Like think of an egg. Egg's going to be fat on the bottom. It's going to have one side that's a little bit more of a pointy uh, transition and that's what you want on your spoon bowl. I want it. I don't I don't do round spoon bowls because I use a gouge. I don't have a hook knife or anything. And uh, But I want it fatter on, on the bottom end here and come into a more of a point down on this end. nothing better than drinking coffee on a cold rainy day uh, the day before Christmas Eve and carving a spoon in a dry place I mean it's semi dry here I'm, I'm am wearing a jacket I mean a hoodie and I'm wearing boots and my, my the porch here is a little bit damp but it's still you know I'm, I don't have rain running down on my head and it's comfortable outside and even though I'm in town here. I'd rather be outside than be inside most of the time. So, anyway, what I'm gonna do now is kind of rough that bowl out a little bit more. With my, I'm gonna use my knife to kind of true up the, the semi-circular edge that I got there. It's not really. It's more like an oval. 
not really an oval though. It's, it's got that teardrop look to it. And then, see, see, I've got the bevel all the way around here. You, you, I don't know if you can see that on the on the video or not. I've got a bevel all the way around here, and I'll end up tr truing it up a little bit with a spoke shave. It helps to keep the bowl nice and flat across there. But uh, then I'll go around and bring it up to that bevel so it's got the same amount of meat all the way around that bevel. Now I've never carved, that I can remember, a spoon out of beach. I've carved rolling pins out of beach and tool handles out of beach, but I haven't carved a spoon out of beach. So, I'm curious to see how it's going to dry out. I know, like sassafras and maple, they tend to they tend to um, they tend to be nice and uh, stable. They don't really they don't really crack that much if it's thin. If the wood's thin, they don't crack as much. Um, maple, from what I've seen, it dried. It's got a high water content, so. When I made the rolling pin, it ended up drying into kind of a, I turned it on a pole lathe, and it ended up drying into kind of an oval shape. So I'm kind of not sure how it'll dry. It might distort a little bit while it's drying. But you notice, I haven't carved the bowl yet. I haven't put, take a gouge and carve the bowl out. And there's a reason for that. When you're carving something, that's the thinnest part. When you want to move stuff around and flex it and put pressure on it, you want to leave that until last on a spoon. Mainly because it has the most potential for breaking. I've not cracked one on a spoon before, but I have cracked a Kuxa across the front. I was able to salvage it because it only cracked off one ring, but. Uh, it's not something I, I want to attempt again. Oh man, I nicked my hand. Look at that. This thing. I'm not usually sitting in this particular location, so I don't have as many places to put my um, my axe. And uh, He's starting to learn. He's learned that that means no. Anyway, that's about as rough as it needs to be. See right here? I went down through here with the knife. This is the knife. It's my own make. I went down through here with the knife and brought it back to the bevel on both sides. It's kind of got a spine down the middle, which I, I've kind of been making a, like a keel down the back side of them. It's kind of old fashioned looking to me. Kind of looks more natural. Um, like I said, you can see the bark here. I carved in from the outside. This is the heartwood on the in, uh, on the inside. Um, I'll get my gouge out and start doing my uh, my bolt. Now, there are probably easier ways to do this. This is a simple older, it's an older one, Buck Brothers gouge. I've showed it in another video. And what I do is, is, I use the handle sometimes when I've got something clamped, but when I'm carving a spoon, I hold it here, and I start right here where the bevel ends, all the way around the inside is where my layout edge is. That way you don't have to have a line there, you know where it's at. And you start working that in. And you can't really see that very well, probably. But what I'm doing is I'm just scooping around the end, and I'm going to go all the way around, and all the way back up here, and then I'm going to split the center out. And that'll be my start. Once it's, once you got the the bowl started, where the blade just can't skate off or take a nick out of it. If it's deep, if it's not, if it's got some depth to it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go anywhere. And another trick is, see how I've got my thumb, my opposing thumb here. I got it pushed against this thumb. And that keeps me from running this hand, this gouge through my hand. You'll only do that once before you find some other way to do it. Whether it's another tool or a better method, but I've never carved beach with a gouge like this, so 
We'll see how it does. It's actually, I think it's doing better than the sassafras did. As far as the, it's easier to carve. It comes off better. Anyway, when you're carving and you can't push your thumb against it, you keep your, your hand out of the way. It's not going to go through this piece of wood to get to your hand, but it will go past it. So want to keep your hand out of the way so you can get that section that you can't. Like I'm, I'm right-handed. It's difficult for me to do that section. There's a knot right there that's catching the blade a little bit. Oh, it's coming out. Anyway, see how I went around the point here? I'll come back and do another pass here in a minute. But... I'm really holding the gouge in place and turning the turning the spoon into the gouge. I think it gives a little bit more control. And the gouge naturally wants to go in and come out. And then you end up with these little curls like this. They're like little U-shapes. I don't know if you can see that or not. That are thin. when I'm going to go up towards the center I put the gouge in my chest and I hold my thumb right here so I'm, I'm, it's kind of like I'm working with like pulling my knife along and I pull my gouge down into the uh, down into the wood I said I think it's easier to steer the spoon than it is to steer the, the gouge. The gouge you're more likely to to slip with a gouge if you're not going right. The spoon, if you're steering it into the wood, you can bury it, twist it, turn it. almost got that roughed out. It's got that depth down there. I don't, I don't know if it comes across on the video very well, but I about got that roughed out. Um, what I normally do is I'll carve them, and then I'll come back and I'll I'll tune them up here in a minute. Well, here in, here in a couple days, so that the because uh, it'll dry out a little bit. You know what it, what it's going to do. If anybody's interested in one of these knives, they're made of uh, spring steel. Uh, the handle on this one is redbud, but I can I do random. I'm in different woods. Uh, I do cherry. I do uh, redbud. I do. I've done them in Osage orange, which I don't have any of right now. I can do them in beech. I can do them in all kinds, but um, it's just an old finish. I get the wood locally. It, I go cut it myself most of the time. It's not a, it's not fancy. Good hard working, hard use knives. About a quarter inch thick on the spine. It's got distal taper. Tapers this way. Tapers tapers this way. Tapers both directions. It tapers back through the handle a little bit too, meaning that it works like a spring. If it if you have to bend it, I mean this one won't bend far because it's got a hard temper on it, but it will flex to a certain extent. You can feel it flexing a little bit. But uh. Anyway, like I said, if anybody's interested in knife, the H is for house blacksmithing. And I have a website, houseblacksmithing.com. Um, I'm going to finish roughing this bowl out. And then uh, I'll go inside and get another cup of coffee because I just ran out. So look at that. Overrun, I scratched myself. I didn't cut myself. But 
I got a little bit of callus there, so. I'm getting into the heartwood down here, so I'm really going to have to not take any more out of the bottom if, if at all possible. Otherwise, I might run through. And I haven't done that yet. Even though some of my maple spoons are see-through thin, I never went through the bottom. But, uh, that's still about an eighth of an inch thick. Oh, it is bleeding. Look at that. I did scratch myself. Keep that thumb up there. Keep it from going anywhere. It doesn't hurt. It must have been real sharp. One of the other ways that you can tell that you got an even bottom when you come in from the outside grain is when you see the same heartwood coming out all the way across it. It means you're getting the same depth. You're getting the same rings. Uh, if you can keep a single ring all the way across, it means you're, you're actually getting pretty deep. But uh, this uh, using a gouge doesn't result in really, really clean bottoms on the bolt on the sp spoons like a hook knife might. Of course, when I go back dry and clean them up a little bit, I can take a lot of the roughness out of them. But um, anyway. I still end up with a little bit. Yeah, I got a sand maybe in the bottom. Try not to do too much sanding, but right there is almost that's almost a finished spoon. You could use it as it is. You'd, it's still green though. Eh? I cut it. I might have cut it three or four weeks ago. But if you leave the bark on it, stand it up in a corner. It's actually standing right behind the camera in the corner. Uh, it won't dry out that fast. Not from the outside in. If you cut it and split it, then it'll dry out pretty quick. But um, that's uh, just about it for the 